So today we are going to talk about um, heart rate and respiration. The question today is a new vocabulary word. So what is homeostasis? Our standard is to use argument based on empirical evidence and scientific reasoning to support an explanation of how the characteristic animal behaviors and specialized plant structures affect the probability of successful reproduction of animals and plants respectively. So today we're going to look at um, homeostasis as a characteristic of living things. So you might not know this word yet, that's okay. We are going to um, learn what this word means today. So think back to yesterday when you were running, you saw that your pulse increased and your rate of respiration increased, your breathing rate. You may have also noticed a few other things happening such as sweating, getting hotter, turning red, okay. So heat is an indication that a chemical reaction is taking place. Increasing the chemical energy in your cells to produce energy produced heat in your body. Heat is thermal energy. Your body responded by perspiring or producing sweat. Sweating is our, your body's way of helping you cool back down. Your body needs a, to keep a constant temperature. That means it needs to stay at the same temperature. It would be dangerous if your body were to get too hot or too cold. So your body has a way to maintain a consistent temperature. This ability of the body systems to keep the body balanced inside in spite of changes inside or outside the body is called homeostasis. Maintaining a consistent body temperature is only one example of homeostasis. Here are some other examples of homeostasis in your body. Regulation of blood sugar, so that your blood sugar doesn't get too high. Constant surveillance and functioning of the immune system. So your immune system is always maintaining balance within your body. Regulation of your blood pressure. Maintaining the correct balance of water. And the nervous system keeps correct breathing patterns to make sure you have enough oxygen. So all of these things are um, types of homeostasis that are happening in your body. Now we're going to read, um, reading 8.1, Organisms, Balancing Acts, page 82 to 83. We're gonna read together to find out more about homeostasis. All right, lesson eight, reading one, Organisms, Balancing Acts, getting ready. Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome to the greatest show on earth, the amazing, the magnificent, the fantastic system that performs seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It is the one, the only, the splendid human body. Okay, maybe that is a little much, but you can imagine anything that performs the way your body does. The body system works constantly to keep yourself supplied with all the things the body needs to function, grow, and repair itself. It keeps itself balanced even when the environment changes so that it maintains the right amount of energy, heat, and water. This self-regulation goes on without you even thinking about it. Yes, indeed, your body is amazing. What about other organisms? Should those systems be part of the greatest show on earth? Do you think that other organisms like plants and other animals have systems that function as well as the human body? What do you guys think? <clears throat> Homeostasis in humans. Homeostasis comes from two words in the Greek language. Homeo meaning same and similar and stasis meaning stand or stay. Homeostasis is the ability of the body systems to keep the body balanced inside in spite of changes outside the body. 
In class, you observe that the body system is always working and interacting to maintain homeostasis. That means that the body has normal rates to supply an organism with what it needs. When you exercised, your body needed more energy. So the circulatory and respiratory systems worked harder to provide cells with more energy. When you rested, the body returned to the same normal rate the body needs to function um, that it had before exercise. Homeostasis also helps to maintain body temperature. When the outside environment changes, homeostasis triggers your body system to react. When it is very cold, your body shivers and your teeth chatter to keep muscles working to warm the body. When the temperature outside is very high or exercise causes the body to warm too much, you perspire to cool your body down. When you perspire a lot, you get really thirsty, so you drink to replace the water your cells have lost. This ideal function, homeostasis, is constantly maintained in your body. At the end of this lesson, you will add homeostasis to your list of characteristics of living things. That means that other organisms must exhibit this function too. How does homeostasis work in other animals or in plants? Can you think of any way homeostasis takes place in an animal or a plant. Hmm, do you guys know of any animals or plants that can maintain body temperature or um, make sure things are going on inside of them, staying stable when outside conditions change? You probably know of a few. Let's take some examples here. Homeostasis in other organisms, other animals. When you answered the previous question, you most likely used examples of other mammals. You may have thought about your pet dog when it pants a lot when playing or walking outside in 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit weather. That happens because, unlike humans, a dog has very few sweat glands, so it does not perspire to cool down. Instead, it pants to cool down or licks itself to spread saliva over the body so it cools by evaporation. Whichever method is used, homeostasis is the goal. You may have noticed that in the winter, your dog's fur is thick, but in the hot summer, it sheds a lot of that fur. Homeostasis is maintained again as the dog is warmed or cooled. Or maybe you thought about birds. Homeostasis in many birds has to do with them keeping their body temperature high. To do this, they eat about 50% of their weight in food each day to keep their metabolisms high to warm their bodies. Northern birds fly to warmer climates in the winter. So all of these things help them to maintain their body temperature. Isn't that crazy? They eat 50% of their weight in food each day. Perhaps you recalled a trip to the zoo when you saw penguins. These birds need to maintain a lower body temperature than the other birds. Did you see them standing with their flippers extended? No, they were not trying to fly. Penguins are flightless birds. Moving their flippers is their body's way of cooling their temperature down. Did you notice the elephant's large, thin ears when you were at the zoo? This is how they can lose heat quickly to maintain homeostasis when they heat up too much. Both mammals and birds are warm-blooded animals. Their bodies must keep a constant internal temperature. They generate their own heat in a cool environment and cool themselves in a hot environment. Other animals like fish and reptiles are cold-blooded organisms and they have to use the temperature of their environment to maintain homeostasis. Because their muscle activity depends on chemical reactions that are very active when it is hot, cold-blooded animals are much more lively when it is warm and very slow moving when it is cold. Fish that live in places where the winters are very cold often move deeper into the water or travel to warmer waters where the temperature is higher. Reptiles lay in the sun and many darken their skin to collect as much warmth from the sun as possible. If they get too hot, reptiles will change their position, hide in a shady nook, and lighten their skin color to repel the sun's heat rays and cool down. Other cold-blooded animals hibernate or become inactive through the winter. What about plants? Plants are organisms, therefore homeostasis is a characteristic of plants. 
Plants are organisms that make their own food and make more than they need and store it in seeds, fruit, stems, or roots. In northern areas, winter days get shorter and colder. Water is hard, harder to obtain from the frozen ground. Trees with broad leaves have to survive through the cold winter. The cold, dry winds of winter can take too much of what water there is from the tree leaves. The trees shed their leaves and become dormant or inactive. They are not producing food and require much less energy to stay alive. They remain in homeostasis, surviving on the water and food protected from the cold and wind by being stored in their thick, strong trunks and branches until new leaves grow in the spring. Evergreen trees, like Christmas trees, do not lose their leaves. For these plants, their structure provides a different way to survive harsh winters. Their leaves, called needles, are covered with a heavy wax coating. This prevents water from being lost. Also, the cells of these needles have natural antifreeze. That is, they produce substances that do not freeze easily. These needles can survive several cold winters before they shed and are replaced by new ones. Look at the photograph of common cactus plant called the Zagaro cactus. This type of cactus grow in very, very hot, dry places. It is a living organism, a plant, and it must be able to maintain homeostasis in the desert. It has to be able to store water since the desert has very little rainfall, which we are well aware of. Rare of, right? So name one structure on the cigarro cactus that you think helps it maintain homeostasis and conserve water. Explain how it would help do that. So let's look at the cactus so you can think about that for a few minutes. What do you think it might do to store water? Hmm, I'm going to let you guys think about that. Homeostasis is a characteristic of all living things. The way each organism remains in homeostasis is unique. Whether the organism sacrifices part of itself by losing leaves in winter or plants, pants or flaps to stay cool, organisms' magnificent systems perform in ways that keep them in balance so they can survive. All right, so your job is to do Google Form 8.1c, I did post these slides under your resources in Google Classroom, so you may definitely open them back up and look up answers. I encourage you to do that. Um, so please complete the Google form, and then you're all done with your science for today. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.